In this video we're going to show you how to perform a color change to leather using our large leather dye repair kit. Okay so here we have of course a beautiful ottoman. You can see this. It's, uh, it's in a uh, dark blue B color. So I'll show you right here. This is the kit. This is the large kit. Comes with a large 8 ounce cleaner. We throw that in for free. You get the leather cleaning and dusting cloth. We throw that in for free all the, uh, the sponge applicators, rubber gloves, sandpaper and everything. We put all that in the kit at no charge so this way we know you're cleaning with the proper cleaner. Our leather cleaner doesn't have any oils or waxes into it and it does a really good job with cleaning leather prior to applying a dye product. Now this ottoman used to look like this. This chair is sort of a naked finished chair. It's faded out, it's extremely soiled and the customer actually wanted it in this color range which is a um, dark blue B and dark blue B is very common with eckhorns or stressless chairs it's that royal blue and you can see here the stud work looks really really nice the wood and of course it's like brand spanking new it's going to stand up to UV rays um, you know, if you were to spill something on it, you could wipe it clean with your leather cleaning and dusting cloth, let it dry. And this, we're just going to basically make a small video showing you how to do that with this chair over here. Because this chair actually was extremely soiled, it had blood stains on it, so the customer didn't want it to the original color. She always wished to have it this color, which is like I said, the Eckhorn Stressless line out of uh, Europe. This is uh, sort of like a royal blue color and it's our dark blue feet. So, we're going to show you how to do this. It's basically just like all the other videos that we have. You're, you're basically going to clean it with our cleaner. You're going to let it dry. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself, let's say, like a t-shirt wiper, a cotton cloth. It doesn't have very much lint and you're going to get some rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol about 99% or 70% solution and you're going to apply it to the cloth and you're just basically going to massage all the oils or waxes that have been applied over the years because our cleaner will do a really good job cleaning this leather but it's not aggressive enough to actually strip or remove waxes or oils it's only going to clean your furniture up to the point where it's not going to damage the finish. So we've already cleaned this with our cleaner, we've let it totally dry, then we've applied of course the rubbing alcohol and you just sort of want to wipe everything down, okay, and let that dry. There's still going to be ingrained stains there and that's okay. It's going to cover it. It's going to look like a brand new piece of furniture. The only other thing is, see these little pleats here and everything? Basically the same thing. You want to apply one thin coat. That thin coat is going to penetrate down into the leather and it's going to dry and it's going to cure and it's going to strengthen. And then all other coats, second, third, fourth, are all going to lay upon that foundational coat that you put on at the get-go. Um, this large kit, which is the eight ounce bottle of leather dye and of course you get a, a, a four ounce sealer will do this chair and this love seat. Now the other thing is too is depending on what you're doing like you know you're going from a really light color to a darker color uh, you have a lot of fade or if the leather is very soft sometimes it draws in more dye and everything it's a good idea just to put on that first foundational coat so it sinks down in, it dries, it cures, and then apply a second and a third and a fourth coat if necessary. But you know, all leathers are all different, they all absorb differently. But general rule of thumb, uh, to do a couch or a large chair and a love seat and a color change, a large bottle will do it. And if this chair was, was darker in color, let's say it was a brown chair to blue, you'd probably use less dye. But we always recommend a large for color changes so this way you don't run out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to apply dye onto this chair and we're going to just show you quickly first coat, second coat, third coat and then we'll, we'll show you a picture of the final product. But this was the before chair and this was the after and this is something that you can do in your own home with our products, okay? All you need to do, of course, see down here in the chair we taped all the, the wood 
uh, you know, with some nice, good quality blue painter's tape. We did the same thing with this. We removed all the stud work around here. You just pop it out with a screwdriver and just wiggle it loose. Make sure you don't uh, damage them, put them in a jar, and then when you're all finished, you just pop them back in and hit them in with a, with a hammer. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll stop now. We'll show you the first coat, second coat, third coat. We'll probably do a little bit of a quicker video, and then we'll show you the final before and after picture. We'll be back. Okay, so we're back just quickly. I just thought I'd walk you through the first step just in case there's any questions. See, in these pleat areas here, with a color change, the only thing uh, you want to make sure of is you have to get every millimeter of the chair or else you're going to see the original color. So with a color change, it's a little bit more crucial to get in all the sort of little nooks and crannies or, you know, if it was the same color, you really don't really have to do that. You, can, you don't really have to get right in there because the uh, color you're applying, of course, is the same color as the chair. But when you're doing color changes, this is the way you want to do it. Of course, shake the bottle of dye. There's a glass bead inside. Shake it for up to a minute or so. Make sure you get the most accurate color, okay? Open up your cap. Apply, uh, you know, a good amount to the sponge. Just like this. And then this is pretty much your first coat. You're just going to apply it on here and it's going to soak down into the leather. It's soaking into the leather now. This is what you want. This is your first penetrative coat. Okay. Now, all inside these seams here, see the seams? You actually want to flood those seams. So in other words, go like this and you can flood them. You just don't want anything running or dripping or anything like that. But if you flood them like that and let it dry, it will dry absolutely perfect, okay? So now we're going to apply more dye. And you want to get that really good penetrative coat. And get inside all the little pleats. See right here, I'm just really getting inside those pleats. You know. And when you're, you know, doing stuff like this, don't do things haphazardly here and there and all this stuff. Start from here and work this way. And then work this way and then work this way and then work this way and then work this way. You know, so always work at the, the you know, the farthest end first and then work back towards you. It's easier instead of working here and now you're over top of your work and getting it on your clothes and all the rest of it. It's always a good idea to put some sort of newspapers down, wear some old clothes. If you do get it on your clothes, Rinse it out with water right away to try to get it out of there before it cures. So here again, we're just putting on a nice penetrative coat. It's soaking in there, it's soaking into the leather, and that's what you want. And same thing with the seams. Here's a seam. Get it right in there. Get it right in. Flood the seam. Flood the seam with the dyes. Okay? And then just gently wipe it off. Now we're applying a little bit of pressure to push the dyes into the leather but the second and the third and the fourth coat very very gentle hand applying the dyes because you want to build the dyes on top of one another. There's no, there's no need to do this. And the other thing that you can do if you want some people find it easier to do this. Just apply the dyes and then you can do a little bit of finger painting if you want. I mean, this does a nice job too. You're, you're actually pushing the dyes in, the first penetrative coat, with the weight of your hand and the glove. And it actually does a nice job. However, you don't have as much control as you do with the sponge. With the sponge, you have a lot of control. Nothing's dripping. Everything's under control. You can apply the dyes and everything's good. When you start to you know, apply the dyes like this, then there's room for error. So if you're out in a garage or something like that, you can apply it straight to uh, the leather and wipe it in. So we're gonna do this pretty much with the whole chair here. We're gonna put one coat on, we're gonna dry it, and then we're gonna be back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're back. As you can see, this is where we wanna go to, this nice, rich, uh, dark blue bee color. And this one, of course, looks a little bit patchy. It looks a little bit blotchy. That's fine. This was the first penetrative coat. So we've applied a nice, good coating on here. We've gotten right into all the creases and everything. And uh, yep, it's pretty much dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a second coat on here. 
and we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. We've applied two coats on here and what we've done now is we've let this dry and now we've taken our sandpaper that comes in our kit. Um, you'll find this in your kit. These, this is the ultra fine sandpaper and if you have any sort of rough areas or anything like that on your chair we're gonna get in here a little bit closer just to show you okay see right here this was a really worn area so we applied the dyes in here they've soaked down into the leather we've put a couple coats on it which is two and now we've used this sandpaper all you have to do is just get your sandpaper and you're just basically feeling with your hand if there's a rough area there because let's say there was a little bit of wear now you're gonna feel it so all you do is just sand it down just lightly like this so it's smooth to the touch that's all you're looking for so right here we've sanded these areas down and now we're going to apply more dye so we're probably going to put on one more coat and we should be okay we'll be back in a minute okay and one more tip that's very handy with color changes is you have to get right inside here when you're of course changing the color and of course all the areas see right down there this is an area where we missed okay we're gonna have to get that later you need to get in there so what are you gonna do you're gonna go like this and then it's gonna stick and all the rest of stuff so basically we use in here these little wooden dowels okay and we break them and you can put them in here I'll show you just quickly you break the wooden dowel you can find it at a hardware store or maybe Walmart or something like that or uh, or any, anywhere where they sell different things, you can put them on here like this, and then of course you can get in there to apply the dyes, or uh, if you have access to some chopsticks, th these work as well, they do a very nice job. All you have to do is sort of gauge how big you need it, and you just sort of break it in half, and you can just put it in there just like this, just enough just to hold it, and you can get in there and dye everything up with, with, the, uh, with the sponge, let that dry overnight and then of course just move these dowels or move these chopsticks over a little bit like that to get in there so this way you can put a couple coats in here dry it apply your sealer and then take all of these little supports out just like this and then it does a perfect job in here so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put on the third coat I think everything's gonna look really good We'll be back and then we'll, we'll get ready to seal it. But in the meantime, if there was any worn areas and you've sanded them down, just like I said before, or if you know you have any, you find a cut or a deep scratch, you can put the filler in at this time, let it dry overnight, and then put your third coat on. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. Uh, as you can see, the chair is looking really nice. It's got three coats of dye on it. If there were some areas, of course, where you put the filler, because a lot of times when you put the dye on, you can see a little bit more of the texture. You can see if there's a cat scratch or anything like that. And again, you can put our filler over top of our finishes as long as the finishes are dried and cured. So what we've done is this is three coats of dye. It looks really, really nice. What we need to do now is we need to put a top coat on it. And the way we would do that, it's in your kit. This is the professional leather sealer right here. Put the sprayer in it. Basically spray it evenly onto the sponge. And then you just wipe it in. Just like that. Just with the weight of just, just with the weight of your fingers. You go like that. Now the other thing is, is if you want to have a really let's say high shine you would spray a lot of product onto the sponge and just sort of wipe it on like this so it's like glistening wet and let it dry but if you want it to be more matte while you're wiping it on continue to sort of wipe it while it's curing and then this way it'll mat down the finish but straight out of the bottle just the way we did it right now this is called a satin sheen and this is the majority of leather furniture and usually the way people like it. This is a satin finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up wiping the whole chair down with the sealer and then we'll be back to install the stud work and we'll show you how to do that. We'll be back in a minute. 
Okay, so we're back. We've applied our sealer all over the chair. We've let it dry and what we're doing now is we're putting the stud work back into the chair. And the way you would remove this stud work, of course, is with a screwdriver and you want to get underneath it and just sort of gently pry it up and then pull it out of there. Or if you have a tool similar to this, you can get right underneath there and just pop it up and then sort of pull it out. So to put these studs back in, you would just get yourself one of these hammers. I always do a nice job and just right back into the hole where it came from and just like that keep going so what we're going to do is we're going to put all the stud work back in we're going to remove the masking tape and we'll show you the chair we'll be back in a minute okay so we're back and as you can see all the beautiful stud work is in you can see the wood all nicely cleaned off and it matches this ottoman perfectly i mean this chair is pretty much fit for a king now. It's in royal blue, which is a dark blue B color. Um, the chair, you saw what it looked like before. It looks absolutely beautiful. And it feels and it looks like brand new leather. It's not going to come off on your hands or anything like that. The way you would take care of this, okay, is our leather cleaning and protection kit very important you can use this for your automobile interiors boat interiors everything this is our 22 ounce leather cleaner okay it'll last you for years you want to spray the cleaner onto the leather cleaning and dusting cloth okay wipe it down get it good and clean let it dry now you're going to spray our clear protector on a sponge wipe down the surface of the leather let it dry it's going to be fully protected it's going to feel like new it's not going to be sticky it's going to repel staining it's going to be easier cleanup and it just makes your leather last that much longer this is our cleaning and protection kit and again here are the contents of the kit very good value a lot of times people just need to actually clean their leather really well and it almost looks beautiful then uh, you know then if you have issues you can apply a dye product but this is how you take care of your leather after you've done something like this which was a complete color change you can do it with our products it's a little bit extra work but I mean everything that in life that's worth something you know takes time and effort anyway so this is about as easy as you're gonna get to do a full professional restoration we showed you pretty much on the video how to do it and you can find this and many more products at leathertouchupdye.com there you have it a professional leather color change that lasts for years if you have enjoyed this video please subscribe now or if you want to order our products, go directly to our website, fixyourleather.com, and please check out our easy order wizard. It makes ordering super easy and builds your order for you.